What is up, YouTube? This is Zach with Dream Media Home Theater, and today I am out here in Texas hooking up some vintage as well as some newer uh, two channel stereo audio for a customer. Pretty cool little system. He's got a bunch of really uh, different speaker setups. We're going to be hooking it up so he can kind of run it like the old school stereo shops back in the day where you can toggle between all the different sets and listen to them throughout the whole home. So I'm going to show you kind of what we're doing here today. So check it out. Many, many options. I might ask the customer to help me out with uh, the names of all these. But you got a good mix here of different types of speakers. <laughs> These are the Infinity RS2s? RS2. Um, sort of like 1980s. These are referred to as the big ass speakers, the yeah, Infinity RS2s. Yeah. When did you say these were made? About 1980. Made in 1980. Look at these bad boys. speaker connections. These are Magnapan. Yeah, made in Minneapolis. USA. Yeah. Alright. Um, those are, they're, the latest thing that's called the Al Infinity LRS, the Little Ribbon Speaker. These are the Little Ribbon Speaker. For each a pair. a pair? Yeah. It's pretty cheap. Yeah, I know they they've got a lot of love. These are the two dot threes. And Geo went out of business a few years ago and they make some really nice speakers. They make some really nice speakers. Uh, those are circa the seventy early seventies. They're the ones that were made famous by the Infinity. The Maxell ad that I showed you. They recently come out with a 50th anniversary reissue where they've totally redone it. These are the actual original. That's a pair of 1979 micro acoustic speakers. They have it really. Can you pull the cover off oh, this? Pull the cover off of that one. Look at the weird tweeter they have. This one? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. The that's super tweeter. <laughs> that's awesome. They've all those Attenuators right there on the right tweeters. There. Yeah, that's crazy. There's two of them in there. Wow. That's cool. They've been... They've been... One of the main things I've been driving for. This is the Warfield Littons, which is a new speaker. They just came out with these, and all they've got to do is just use these. That's a nice finish, huh? Yeah. The anniversary edition? Yeah, they just, it's like a 40th anniversary of the original Warfield Littons. Nice. So, as you guys can see here, uh, Thomas is working on getting the speaker selector hooked up. Here on the, the back, I'll show you what's going on here. Just doing a little wire management, trimming up these connections. Whenever we got here, they were kind of long um, and actually shorted out the amp. So we want to definitely make sure all those connections are nice and solid. No bare copper hanging out. But basically, these are going to split off to all the rooms or all the stereo zones throughout this room so that he can independently isolate which ones he wants to listen to depending on his mood. Pretty cool. Pretty 
desk, what is that, like a, an RP600? A six, yeah, RP600M. Mm -hmm. And uh, e ELAC has a new entry-level speaker also, both of which have gotten a lot of love. Yeah, I've heard good things about ELEC. I've never actually heard them. They're pretty affordable, right? Yeah. Here is one of the uh, other speaker selectors, which you can see we're gonna have to redo some of those connections as well. Uh, customer is gonna be powering most of the main speakers for this room up with this Emotiba, um, the XPA2, which all of this equipment the customer owned. We didn't split anything. We're just out here having fun. Um, we got the in command series, which is actually shorted out. We're going to be transferring everything over to this guy. Uh, this is also an in command series, the X uh, 7200 W. So the plan is is to pull this guy out and hook up his bedroom, which there's a set of really nice stereo speakers in there too. We're going to hook that up to zone two, so we can just hop right out of the pool and go into his bedroom and play the content, whatever music you'd like, right to that zone from his phone. And then in here, this is gonna be all manual push button. Still be able to stream to the main zone, but then you'll have to select on the speaker selector exactly which set of speakers you want to play. Should be pretty cool. All right, guys, this is the living room. And you can see we got a couple more stereo speakers in here. Some Polk Audios, the guys are working on getting hooked up right now. Towers. And some JBLs back there. What we did is just ran the line down here. Uh, the customer was okay. He doesn't know how long he's gonna live here, so he just said to make a small little hole. Ran it down the side here. And uh, got the speaker selector hooked up for him so he can toggle between the two sets when he's listening. And we left some slack in case he wants to move them to really anywhere he wants in the room. Pretty cool, little, little stereo setup. There's also some in walls up here that we tied into the system as well for listening. Um, now here in the other room, let me show you what we got. Holy speakers. So you can see this guy, he's got some, some speakers for sure. Monitor audio. Old Towers, Folk, more Folk. Looks like he's been just upgrading over time. But here's what we just hooked up. You can see again, we just ran him down the wall like that. The guys tried to tack it nice and clean. You can see right here. Um, so that at least, you know, it doesn't look horrible when we use white wire 14 too. But you can see his bed's here. Um, we just hook these guys up for him. We'll probably tow them in a little bit too. The guys have just made the connections on it. And this is all terminating back in the main room over there. And these right here are going to run off of zone two on the uh, Denon. All right, guys, so we're just making our final connections, and we have the amplifier uh, hooked up as a 2.1 with zone 2, and uh, we have the pre-outs going up to the Emotivo, which is powering up the stereo zones for most of this room here, and then we're using the internal amplifier for the other rooms of the home as well as the patio, and we're going to go ahead and get this party started, do some demos. So the cliffs sound a lot better. Yeah, this is uh, really 
been interesting. So we just did the bookshelves over here, the Eclipse and the ELAC. Uh, the Eclipse were definitely outperforming the ELAC without a doubt. Uh, we did these uh, Warfidel versus these guys down here versus the JBLs and the JBLs. The JBLs are amazing, they sound really good. And then out of these guys over here, it's completely different audio for sure. We had the ribbon speakers, which are very interesting. It's like you can't even really pinpoint where the audio is coming from. It fills the room really nice, but it's uh, kind of just like a high frequency speaker. Um, these guys, there's something going on. Either they're underpowered or they're having some issues uh, in the cabinet that may need to be serviced. Um, these guys sound all right. Martin Logan's. Uh, Okay. Um, so far, we're all liking those JBLs. They sound pretty sweet. Riding on the wall. Oh, you have to select them here. So six comes to here and then it splits. All right, guys. Well, that was really cool. Uh, I'll have to say we don't get to play around with stereo audio every day, especially a collection like this. I mean, that was awesome. Got to listen to all the different brands, all the different noises that they produce, different frequencies. They're all manufactured in a completely different way and definitely output differently. Very interesting. Well, um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it informative and fun. And if you liked it, make sure to give me a big thumbs up and hit that subscribe button down below. This is Zach with Dream Meteor Home Theater. Thank you for watching. Yeah.